Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you. You're watching Alaska Weather on this 19th of September. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather situation. And you can do that very easily by calling us at 1-800-472-0391. That, of course, is the Alaska Weather Information Line. It's a toll-free call. It's always on 24 hours a day and free to you in Alaska. You can always find us online at weather.com slash Alaska as well. And if you can't find what you're looking for on our website or you're having problems with it, which we understand has been happening from time to time in the last several days, we are aware of it. We're working on it. We're fixing it as quickly as we possibly can. But do let us know. An easy way to do that is using the email address at the bottom of the website that you're looking at. Or if it's something that you find on the show or you just have a question and you'd like a human to answer your information, let me know. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is an easy way to find me, and I'm happy to serve you any way I possibly can. Let's take a look at what's going on across the region, and as we're looking at southeast, it does look like it's going to rain. Rain will begin in the northern panhandle tomorrow morning and spread uh, into the south throughout the day. Widespread rainfall totals of at least 2 to 4 inches expected through Saturday morning. It's going to rain in southeast. I know it's a little different than... Uh, it has been for a large part of the summer. It looks like some of the heavier rainfall could be around the capital city, out through uh, Gustavus, Huna, up toward Pelican, Yakutat, easily three to four inches there. And some of the heavier bands will probably push up towards Sitka. You'll see lesser amounts in southern parts of southeast, but it will be spreading this way, and you'll probably end up with at least some two to three inch totals as you work further and further south. Now, one of the uh, issues with this and the way the weather is coming in, it does look like we may see enough rainfall around the Taya Inlet uh, and the Taya River itself, that a flood watch has been posted for the river. It's just going to toe the line of pushing that up above flood stage. So keep that in mind as you're uh, up toward Haines and the Taya River. Uh, the river levels there could be approaching flood stage as we go into uh, early Saturday morning there, or Friday night and Saturday morning for sure. River could come up fairly quickly. So uh, watch for more information from your weather forecast office friends there in Juno, weather.gov slash Juno for more information. In the meantime, the drought monitor is unchanged, really. I have some very small variations, but by and large, we are still in extreme drought across southern parts of southeast. We're still in severe drought for a large part of southeast that's bounding that, and moderate drought a little bit further north, which includes Juno. To the north of that, Yakutat is at least in the beginning stages of drought, so some of that may have eased up a little bit. Uh, severe drought continues for parts of Prince William Sound, and you can see the extreme drought, again, still over the northern parts of the Kenai Peninsula and the Forelands, all the way through Anchorage and up into the Matanuska Valley. Who'd have thought, especially this time of year? And then we get that abnormally dry, bounding all the way into southwestern Alaska and still looking at severe drought in parts of Kodiak Island and the archipelago there. This is the latest and greatest from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, their drought monitor system. And the important thing for those folks is not only to monitor how much rainfall has occurred, but compare that to seasonal normals. So again, we're talking about long-term droughts, several years now across parts of Southeast where conditions have been drier than normal. And for South Central and Southwest, this is more of a short-term drought, so something that could be healed fairly quickly, but it still needs to rain and that moisture still needs to fall across the area. Now, the really, uh, other major factor for this is the researchers need to know how is the drought impacting you. And we do know of water shortages. We know of uh, plants uh, and uh, you know berries maybe not growing in the same quantity or the size that, that you've been used to in the past. Those types of things are really important to the researchers. And you can do your part as a citizen scientist and go online to droughtreporter.unl.edu slash map and click on the submit a report button and that will help the researchers understand how drought is impacting you in Alaska because this is new territory. This is not something that we have a lot of experience with, especially in southern Alaska where conditions are normally wet, especially this time of the year. So do your part, help us out, help the researchers uh, that are monitoring drought conditions in Alaska out, and 
tell us what you've seen this year that is different from previous years. That, that really helps a lot. Fire danger is certainly something that we know about. Uh, the Swan Lake fire is still ongoing and still staff. They're still fighting that and trying to contain that. Uh, having trouble with trees falling over now as the winds move through, the, the root system, of course, is, is loosened and very weak. And a little bit of wind just pushes those trees right over. Uh, still working to mop up uh, situations around the uh, McKinley fire and some of our uh, Susitna Valley fires there. And still watching conditions carefully around the Copper River Valley. The good news is it is going to rain there in the next several days. The bad news is there's still high fire danger across the Copper River Valley. Uh, better news still, though, is we are looking at places out west. That was kind of a, a once-and-done situation yesterday. We saw the uh, higher fire danger out west. It looks like that is uh, limited again today. And many parts of south central and southwest, not to mention southeast, are really getting a reprieve from those higher fire dangers. Let's take a look at the visible satellite picture here, and you can see the swath of moisture coming in across the Gulf, pushing its way up into south central and southwest, a lot of that working its way into British Columbia, and you can see some of the drier, cooler air working its way into the western interior, and cold air spilling southward as well. In fact, the forecasters in Fairbanks are telling me that there's enough cold air poised and ready to spill into the region as we work into Saturday that snow levels may be dropping low enough that you'll see that in some parts of the central and eastern interior and certainly in the north levels could drop around 2,000 feet so don't be surprised if you run into a little bit of snow as you move through the interior this weekend especially on some of the lower summits and passes in the area. Uh, the visible satellite picture does show kind of a break in the clouds out there across the western bearing. That will likely fill in with IFR and uh, probably some fog and poor visibility as we go through the next several days there. You'll notice the overall trend is to bring up this southern surge of moisture right across south central. Uh, it is going to rain again across the region as we head through tonight and into tomorrow. And we expect this to kind of slop on over into southeast where it will focus that rainfall across the region probably well into Saturday as low pressure just hovers right here around Prince William Sound. Here's a look at the lay of the land as far as the surface weather charts go this afternoon. You can always find these online at weather.gov slash anchorage slash TV. Low pressure hovering around Yakutat this afternoon, trying to push in another disturbance. That's what's creating the rainfall in your area now. A stronger southerly flow will build across the western Gulf, moving into Prince William Sound, the Kenai Peninsula, and Kodiak Island. Low pressure sitting around Bristol Bay at 1,003 millibars and high pressure kind of chopping up the clouds just a little bit across the western interior, Norton Sound, Kotzebue Sound, all the way up to the northwest coast. Several other disturbances are hovering out across the west, but as we get into tonight, the main show in town will be across the northern Gulf at 984 millibars. The triple point uh, showing the periods of moderate to occasionally heavy rainfall will become a little more heavy and more widespread in its heaviness as it moves into southeast, all the way up the outer coast into parts of Prince William Sound. The ridge of high pressure across British Columbia and parts of the Pacific Northwest will scoot just a little bit north and east, and that's going to hold this in place, focusing that rainfall on the same old spots, really some of the wettest spots in all of Alaska, where it should be, it'll stay there, and it'll be in place. Good news. A trough of low pressure will sit across Cook Inland and across western Alaska. That will keep unsettled weather across a large part of south central and southwest. Showers for Bristol Bay up and down the west coast. And as you look on the northern side of this, again, remember I said there's going to be enough cool air that you might see some rain and snow showers? Well, we think that will happen for sure up around the Brooks Range tonight. And you may see some mixing down toward your places like Indian Mountain, just like yesterday, and perhaps on the northern side of that up toward Fort Yukon, but by and large, this should be rain for most places down at low elevations. Now on the peaks, sure, it's going to be cold enough that you'll see some new snow. As we get into Friday, low pressure will kind of start moving south and southeast into northwestern Alaska. This is going to help pull in some colder air into west and northern parts of Alaska. Up north, here's the Brooks Range, here's Fort Yukon, Arctic Village and up toward Bettles, and you'll start to see that snow line coming down, I think, by Friday. Most places, again, are still dealing with rain in the interior, and certainly more rain for parts of Prince William Sound, South Central, and certainly Southeast. The three dots here mean a better chance for heavier rainfall in your area. This front really doesn't move much. It really focuses on the outer coast of Southeast, so it will be windy. Gales and maybe some low-end storm force winds in the region are possible. Showers across the Gulf and fog for a large part of the Aleutians, 
and northerlies again building into western Alaska, so dragging in some of that colder air coming in behind. As we get into Saturday, the low doesn't move very much. The front starts to fall apart a little bit and lose its focusing characteristics for some of that more uh, focused, heavier rainfall. It will still be raining in southeast and showers to occasionally light rain, still possible. Areas of fog across the Copper River Valley and periods of rain and snow across the interior. That snow level will be coming down as we go into Saturday. Watch for rain to slowly peel out and that cold air to bring that snow line down into uh, lower elevations across the interior. Not talking about a substantial amount of snow, but something could fall on the road and if you're doing some traveling, you want to keep watch on that. Of course, out across the central and western Aleutians, we have a new storm to introduce by this point. 991 millibar low, not a big one just yet, but areas of rain and wind surrounding this low as it moves in toward Adak and Atka. A brief ridge interrupts that across the Alaska Peninsula there, but again, that is helping to drag in a little bit more of that colder air across the west coast. In the meantime, areas of rain and snow continue across the north slope and periods of fog and snow for some parts of the Brooks Range. Let's take a look at your temperatures. As we get into tonight, 20s and 30s for the North Slope, just at or below freezing for the Chukchi Coast, 30 around Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, 35 for Unalakleet, 38 in Kotzebue, low 40s for Bristol Bay, 50 in Kodiak Island, and 40s and 50s for parts of Southeast. South Central tomorrow will be a little milder, mid 50s perhaps. Fairbanks looking at 53, 51 in Eagle, and upper 30s for the Beaufort Sea Coast with Folks on the Chukchi Coast, Point Hope and Point Lay to Wainwright, all warming up into the 40s. 50s and 60s in southeast. Sitka could be one of the warmer spots. Kodiak just shy of 60. Sand Point, Cold Bay, Falls Pass, and King Cove all in the 50s tomorrow. St. Paul and St. George about 50 degrees. And you'll see similar conditions there in Atka. Overnight low Saturday morning in the mid-30s for the North Slope. As you head down toward Galena and the Koyukuk Valley, it's going to be cold. McGrath also very close to freezing. South central temperatures will be cooling off substantially. The east side of town could be below freezing and high temperatures on Saturday in the 40s and 50s, 30s in the Brooks Range. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And on with your aviation weather now. IFR concerns will spread up through Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound, across the Alaska Range into the Kuskokwim Delta and as far south as southeast as uh, wide areas of rain are moving east, as we already saw in the forecast maps there. Across the uh, Middle Tanana Valley, northward into the Eastern Brooks Range, expect IFR conditions there. Uh, also looking for hit and miss marginal conditions across the North Slope and all the way up and down the West Coast for the most part. One exception would be the south facing slope or, and, and the coastline for sure of the Seward Peninsula and Norton Sound and IFR expected across the Aleutians all the way out toward the west. As we get into the afternoon, you'll see some breaks there, but look for marginal conditions to hold across most of southwest, most of interior southwest, most of the interior itself. The Alaska Range as well as Prince William Sound of the Copper River Valley in southeast hammered in with IFR. It looks like this will be a very decent amount of rain. Low visibility, low ceiling should be expected, not to mention turbulence as you'll see in a minute. And IFR concerns continue across the Beaufort Sea Coast. As we get into your morning on Saturday, IFR lingers across southeast into the Copper River Valley up through the Wrangell St. Elias, the Alaska Range, and into the Middle Tanana Valley and points east into the Upper Yukon. The North Slope, especially from Wainwright east and south toward the Brooks Range and over the summits, IFR concerns will continue there. Marginal conditions through the Bering Strait and through really most of the Aleutians. And as we get into the afternoon, the next weather system is already pushing IFR into most of the Alaska range, or the Aleutian range and the uh, Aleutians themselves with marginal conditions across Bristol Bay, southwest and into Norton Sound. Most of the Yukon Valley looking at marginal weather into Saturday and southeast gets a little bit of a reprieve but still holding on to marginal conditions through your Saturday with IFR holding across the North Slope and the Eastern Brooks Range. Here's your pass conditions in detail now. It looks like things are going to get lower for Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass as we go into your Friday there with marginal transitioning over to IFR throughout the day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass hold at IFR really most of the day. Rainy Pass likely holding at IFR conditions there. Windy Pass IFR as well. Isabel Pass looks to be IFR. Mentasta Pass may sneak out with just marginal weather throughout the day. Tanita Pass, we expect to see IFR conditions throughout the day. Portage Pass IFR and Chilkoot and White Pass, it's going to be pretty low and slow as we go. A freezing levels show that colder air is trying to push its way southward. You can see levels now dropping to about two to 4,000 feet across the bearing. 
We still have a healthy dose of warm air across the east, though. The two and 4,000-foot levels rise to as far north as the Brooks Range summits in the east north of Arctic Village. And you can see that ridge is really pumping in a lot of heat from about 6,000 to maybe as much as 10 to 11,000 feet across most of seven, uh, southeastern Alaska. South Central is holding between 4 and about 6, and most of the interior is somewhere between about 2 and, say, 5,000 feet. Icing potential is growing now. You can see a much broader area where icing is at least possible. Isolated moderate is possible above 6,000 feet across the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, a little bit lower out here across the middle of Yukon and into Bristol Bay, about 5,000 feet and above. And then across the eastern interior, all the way down toward Kodiak Island and the Kenai Peninsula, those levels are about seven to 8,000 feet. No significant icing just yet. Uh, below 10,000 feet, that is, across southeast. And out across the west, most of that is about 10,000 feet and above. Here's the jet stream right now, and you can see that very large and in charge ridge of high pressure here across southeast. Uh, wind speeds there 90 to about 165 knots coming right off of the Pacific, and this has an ample amount of moisture that's moving northward. South and westerly winds stay strong across the interior, not as strong as what we see to our south with that main jet core, but they are strong still. 50 to 60 knots coming in from the west and southwest, still off the water as well into mainland Alaska. At 9,000 feet, we have low pressure that's going to hold very close to Prince William Sound tomorrow. Strong southwesterlies out ahead of it over southeast. That could bring winds in from 50 to 60 knots. And north and westerly winds coming in behind it, 25 to about 35 knots, with light winds generally over the interior. At 3,000 feet, and low pressure stacked and packed right over Prince William Sound once again. Southerlies 45 to 50 knots across the eastern Gulf. Northerlies a little bit stronger over Bristol Bay here, 25 to about 35 knots. 50 knots across the northern Gulf and still light winds across the interior, anywhere from about 5 to 15 knots. Look for an east and southeasterly flow over the north slope, 15 knots there. And uh, winds starting to pick up from the south and west across the western chain, 15 to 25 there as we get into your Friday. Turbulence, yeah, let's talk about this carefully. It does look like there is going to be widespread considerable moderate from Prince William Sound all the way into Haida Gwaii. But watch out for the brief potential for isolated severe as we go throughout the day. Some of this could be below five to 6,000 feet in the southeast, a little bit further west, maybe below 8,000 feet across the Wrangell St. Elias into Prince William Sound southwest, also looking for a decent amount of chop throughout the day. Humno Equinox. It's fall. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Okay, Dean, what the heck are you doing? Uh, so I heard a rumor that you can balance an egg on end on the spring or fall equinoxes, so I wanted to try it out. Any luck? Uh, no, not yet, but I'll keep trying. I hate to tell Dean, but that's just an urban legend. But what does happen during the equinox is truly amazing. The sun rises due east and sets due west. And there are 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness over the entire world. And the autumnal equinox is coming up on September 23rd. So what's really going to happen? Let's show you. Autumn officially begins at the autumnal equinox, September 23rd. So get ready for some in-your-face sunrises and in-your-face sunsets. On the equinoxes, the sun rises due east and sets due west. That means if you drive to work on a due east road, at sunrise, the sun will rise directly over the yellow line in the middle of the road. And if you drive home at sunset on a due west highway, the sun will set right in front of you, even without eggs falling from the sky. Sorry about that. That could take, uh, make for a blinding commute. <laughs> you actually might notice this dazzling sunrise and sunset for a week on either side of the equinoxes, and driving can be treacherous. So get out your sunglasses and put those sun visors down. But what are the equinoxes anyway? Well, the word equinox comes from the Latin equi, which means equal, and nox, which means night. So on both the spring and fall equinoxes, the hours of night are equal to the hours of daylight. You probably learned that as the Earth circles the sun, it's tilted. When the northern hemisphere of the Earth is tilted toward the sun, that's when we have summer. We get more energy from the sun and have longer days and shorter nights. 
When we're on the other side of the sun and the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, we get less energy from the sun and have shorter days and longer nights. But in between summer and winter, we come to the points where the sun falls directly on the equator. And that means as the Earth turns, everywhere on our planet receives 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. Equal day, equal night, equinox. If you watch the sun rise on the first day of spring, you'll see that it rises due east. But if you watch the sun rise each successive day after that, you'll notice that it'll rise a little bit farther north of east each successive day until it reaches its furthest point north of east on the first day of summer. Then the sun will seem to back up and rise a little bit less northeast each successive day until once again on the first day of autumn it will rise due east. Then each successive day it will rise a little bit farther south of east until on the first day of winter when it will rise at its farthest point southeast. After which it will slowly start to retrace its journey north once again. And this entire cycle repeats year after year after year. In fact, almost all ancient cultures kept track of this rising and setting of the sun at different places on the horizon. Maybe they would set up stones to mark the sunrise and sunset points. Or posts, or mounds, or windows, or even buildings. Sorry, Dean, no eggs. Aw, oh, man. With these markers, they could measure the length of year and create the first calendars. So put those sun visors down as you drive back and forth to work next week. And why not start your own personal record, keeping track of where the sun rises and sets on your horizon throughout the year. Starting next week, you'll definitely notice that the sun will rise and set farther south each day. And that means winter is only a few months away. And Dean, only I can balance an egg whenever I wish. Whoa, no way! Keep, Keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And back with your sea ice update now. There is some new ice growing up in the main ice pack here. Most of that is going to be just off your screen, but we continue to see the marginal ice zone and the main pack itself colored here in white with concentrations above 80%, anywhere from 350 to about 450 nautical miles north of Utkiavik. Uh, somewhere on the order of about 375 to 425 nautical miles north of uh, Kaktovik. And uh, what you see here, what you will see in the coming days is probably some more marginal ice that's slowly drifting around into the Beaufort Gyre. Uh, it won't be new ice forming necessarily here, but new ice moving into the area of concern from the Alaska Sea Ice Program. So watch that for more information. Of course, uh, as we approach late September, this is about the point now where we would declare this a sea ice minimum, especially if we're starting to see new sea ice grow. Winds are going to come up across southeastern Alaska looking for low-end storm force winds across the outer coast, 45 to 50 knots there, especially in the northern Gulf. Seas coming up to about 14 feet there. Gusts around the Lynn Canal could reach up into 45 knots. Uh, same goes for Stevens Passage and down into the Clarence Strait with south and southeasterlies really taking over as the next front comes in. Of course, a lot of rain coming with that as well. As we get into Saturday, gusts continue across the Lynn Canal, 35 knots there. A wind subside a little bit across the northern Gulf, 15 knots, 20 knots south of Sitka into the Dixon entrance, anywhere from 12-foot seas there to maybe 10-foot seas in the north, and you're looking at 4-foot seas on the inside for Saturday. Still a blustery situation to start your weekend. Prince William Sound, northeasterly is inside, 30 knots, 7-foot seas. Southerly is on the outside, 30 knots, 14-foot seas. North and westerly is coming across the Barrens and out of the Kenai Fjords region, 25 to 35, seas up to 10 feet. And 5-foot seas coming down Cook Inlet with that northerly flow at 20 knots. That subsides a little bit again. And the northern Cook Inlet waters at 10 knots and 3 foot seas. Look for winds to really come up though across the Barrens, 40 to 45 seas, 13 to 14 feet. All that's feeding into low pressure again across the eastern Gulf with seas uh, coming up to about 9 to 10 feet across the northern Gulf, 3 foot seas inside of Prince William Sound on that northwesterly wind at 25. Look for northwesterlies to flow over all of the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island there, 25 to 30 knots, 7 foot seas in the Bering. 
uh, expecting eight to nine foot seas for most of the northwestern Gulf. Five foot seas coming in from the west across Shelikoff Strait. Strong winds are 25. Looking for that to come up to 30 knots on Saturday. Seven foot seas expected. South and westerlies moving across the north and western Gulf. Eight to 11 foot seas, even 12 foot seas east of Akiak and Kodiak with a 35 knot wind. And uh, looking for winds to come in from the west and southwest across the Bering. 20 knots with seven to eight foot seas in the region. Now for the central and western chain, we still have high pressure that's trying to hold on to uh, uh, the southern Bering and the North Pacific, but we keep having waves of low pressure move through. So this is kind of the in-between the call uh, in the region there. 15 to 20 knots expected for most areas on Friday, five to six foot seas across the Bering Sea coast, seven to eight foot seas on the Pacific side with that northwesterly flow taking over the eastern chain, 15 to 20, and light southwesterlies developing out in the west, 15 knots and six to seven foot seas in the region. Now as we get into Saturday, the effects of low pressure take over once again, coming in from the south and west, and we start to draw in that air from the east and the northeast, especially out in the western end of the chain. 25 knots there, 20 to 25 across the central and eastern uh, islands with a five to six foot sea there, four to five foot seas across the Bering, and five to six foot seas out in the west. For the west coast, north and westerly still feeding into low pressure in the Gulf here. You see uh, five to six foot seas up and down the coast. Norton Sound, 15 knots, northerlies there with a three foot sea, southeasterlies for St. Matthew, northwesterlies for St. Paul and St. George. What a mess, five foot seas expected. As we get into Saturday, westerlies coming ashore, from north of Etolan Strait and McCoriak to southwesterlies into the Kuskokwim Delta. Those are 25 knots with a six foot sea. Westerlies building in across St. Paul and St. George. Eight foot seas for you. And southerlies into Nome on the south facing coast of the Seward Peninsula. 15 knots and a three foot sea. For the north slope, easterlies across the Beaufort. 15 to 20 with a four foot sea. South and easterlies across the Chukchi Coast. 15 knots and four foot seas there on Friday. For Saturday, look for a broad easterly flow, 20 to 25, five to six foot seas expected, and kind of a light and variable flow across the Chukchi, but a stronger westerly flow coming into Kotzebue Sound at 20 knots with a five foot sea on Saturday. Recapping tonight's weather, a flood watch is posted for tomorrow into Saturday for the Taya River around Haines, looking for some periods of moderate to more widespread heavy rain ahead of this weather system, a 984 low moving into southeast tonight and just hovering right along the outer coast. Gales and storm force winds are coming up across the outer coast at 50 knots across the northern Gulf. Rain will spread through south central and southeast, and snow levels are coming down across the northern interior, maybe as low as 2,000 feet. So watch for that and travel safely. See you tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.